Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Comic Book Club. I'm Alex. I'm Justin. And Pete is still away, but we got three awesome Marvel reviews for you guys. We are going to talk about Necrotia, number one. What a name. Dark Reign, The List, Punisher, number one. And X Factor number fifty. That's a big issue. It's a milestone. About. A so milestones. let's kick it off talking about Necrotia number one. Uh, highly controversial slash anticipated event. What do you yeah. think about it? Uh, it's just great to see uh, the Blackest Night finally come to Marvel. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's great that it's sort of spreading out. Eventually, um, I'm sure uh, the Star Wars characters will be dealing with zombies of their dead relatives. Uh, it's going to be real, uh, real terror. Um, I don't know. That's the, it's a shame because I'm very excited for this crossover, but it comes off like a blatant Blackest Night ripoff. Yeah. Um, but uh, I got to ask you, uh, if you read the backup, there's a little Doug well, Ramsey. There's a bunch of there's three issues that come out this week. There's yeah. uh, X Force uh, number twenty, I think. Twenty came out this week. Yeah, Necrotia number one and New Mutants number six or something yeah. like that. Read them in that order first of all. That's the order they go in yeah. because Necrotia starts right after X Force. New Mutants right after Necrotia. Yeah. Uh, Doug Ramsey comes back, you guys. I feel really weird about it. Um, he is better looking, for sure. Yes. And he translates the shit out of something. Which yeah. I was like, go dad, dude, translate that. <laughs> which I was like, sweet, man. He <laughs> di disencrypted. You know how hard that is to do for regular right, human computer programming? Here, here, here's the deal. <laughs> I love Doug Ramsey. He's my absolute favorite character. This feels a lot like uh, the stuff that they've done with Doug Ramsey over and over, where he comes back, but it's always some techno-organic virus that's infecting him. They did the same thing with the Foundlings Covenant, right? right? Love the Foundlings Covenant. Yeah, and this actually feels the closest to that. It feels yeah. very close to the Foundlings Covenant right now, mixed with Blackest Night. Uh, it does feel unfortunate that it is uh, derivative of these other things, because I think otherwise uh, it's a good issue. It's yeah. fun. I like seeing these characters. I'm curious about what's going on. I think the writing is good and the art is good yeah. on all of them. Definitely. Um, but it's just not going to escape those Blackest Night comparisons. There's no way around. Well, it's just so it's so ridiculous. Why would they do have have dead members of the of the cast come back and then yeah. be like, "Wait, you're dead." It's like so it's so it's right out of it. Yeah. It's also, too bad. I'm just curious about what the overarch here is, what the end game because like Blackest Night, I want to get beyond like, "Oh my god, you're back alive." Yeah. And just get into What's the plot here? Yeah. What, what is Celine's plan? What's going on? Well, it's interesting. Uh, Necrotia, she ends up, spoiler here, uh, in yeah. Genosha. So I think it's like a world of dead mutants. Is that yeah. the idea? Yeah, or so a land like of that. dead mutants? I don't know. It, it the... does feel like they're getting through it quicker. You know, yeah. I mean, it's a smaller event. So they're definitely like, all the dead characters come back at the same time and everybody right. reacts to it at the same time. So I think we are going to get beyond that pretty quickly, is my hope. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm 100% on board, so I don't know if I can 100% recommend Pick It Up. I say Pick It Up. Actually, I like the way they're dealing with it a little bit better than Blackest Night. Like you're saying, they're just being like, these people are dead. Let's move on. When yeah. Blackest Night, it's like, every character has to be stunned. Don't they, don't, doesn't like Superman have a cell phone? You yeah. can't call up everyone else and be like, oh, dead people are coming alive. They go, okay, so they're not surprised every time when they're like, are you real? Like, well, no, also they know. Sure. They're like, there's blackish, there's black rings everywhere. Dead are coming back. Oh my god, this dead person is back. Yeah. You know, so they already know the background and they're still shocked by it. Anyway, uh, let's move on and talk about Dark Rain, The List, Punisher, number one. Um, we've been a little back and forth, or actually even a little down, I think, about The List the event. List, yeah. uh, it's a little weird to talk about a Punisher issue when Pete isn't here. Yeah. But what did you think about this? And... I will say there's no way of talking about this without major, huge spoilers. Definitely spoilers. Also, though, I mean, the, the previews for the next uh, Rick Romero sure. Punisher. Also so it's spoiled. not totally shocking. Definitely. But, uh, but the Punisher gets iced, gets decapitated. He uh, gets Dakin, uh, slices him into tiny little bits and pieces. Yeah. I... I don't know. What I love about this, I love the Rick Romero Punisher uh, for a lot of reasons. I love that he's kind of taken a lot of... Uh, like superpowers from other Marvel characters, like he's yeah. using pin particles here, which I think is great. Yeah, um, that's a fun little thing. Uh, but and then to kill him, and then we're gonna see him sewn back together. I think. Yeah. Really Here's is. what I actually loved about this issue, beyond the fact that it was great. Uh, John Romita Jr. Klaus Johnson yeah. art is that it feels like what the list should have been all along. Yeah. That. <laughs> Norman Osborn says, "Hey, he's one guy. Let's blow up everything around him." And yeah. When that doesn't work, he sends thousands and thousands of Hammer agents after him, and they're just like, kill him. Kill him until he's dead. Yeah. And the rest of these list things have been like, ah, let's send one guy yeah. that this person has beaten before. Yeah, the list. That'll take care of him. Uh, Dark Rain list, Hulk, it was like, all right, Miss Marvel, go beat the Hulk. And it's like, well, that's a crazy idea. <laughs> that's stupid. 
Yeah, and I feel like a, what, that's been a lot of them. They feel like they've yeah. been hampered by, all right, we're going to make big things happen, but big things can't really happen. Yeah. There's issues. That's what it's felt like. This one, because Rick Remender has clearly gotten the go-ahead to chop Frank Castle into little bits and turn him into a Frankenstein monster, they were allowed to do that, and it feels like it should. I feel like you can do anything, anything you want with the Punisher. Like, it's yeah. the one character where you're like, yeah, cut him cut him up, have him really? throw him out. Yeah, like, it's because he's always, like, his goal and his uh, his drive is always so, just one, it's one direction. It's like, I have to kill everybody because they killed my family. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what happens. Did you read uh, the Punisher issue that came out this week as well? Uh, I did not. Yeah, craziest, craziest, most ridiculous, most unbelievable Punisher moment, I think, ever. I'm really curious really? to hear what Pete thinks about it. Oh, well, yeah, And also read that issue uh, before you read. I uh, love the last issue, the um, the short story collection. I thought it was oh, awesome. Yeah, that's good. Oh, Punisher Max. Yeah, this is, I'm talking about the Rick Render yeah, yeah. Punisher. Anyway, uh, definitely pick up this issue. Yeah, it's cool. Say. And the next one should be good. Last but not least, X Factor number 50. Uh, I'm going to feel a little bad spoiling this because Peter David gets so angry yes, at people does. who spoil things and particularly at us all the yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what did you think about this issue? Uh, I like it. I feel bad for people that aren't, that don't know the continuity so well mm-hmm. because it's such a continuity uh, rich thing and it's tough to, uh, to really get into it. And the characters are, uh, I don't know, like the cortex, all this and that. But uh, as a fan of X Factor, a longtime fan, I thought it was great, great reveal of Layla, uh, Layla Miller. At the yeah, end. who knew that Layla Miller was Pet Cemetery? Yeah, <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've never seen Pet Cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's where pets come alive. Yeah, you yeah. think you'd be suburban? No, I think you're Pet Cemetery. <laughs> if you've seen Pet Cemetery or Reddit, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, I like this issue. I wanted to love it, but I didn't quite love it. And I, I think the, the thing way. that was hampering me from loving it was the narration. There was a little too much. I understand it's a noir book, and they even make jokes about the fact that it's a noir yeah. book doing action. But there was a little too much of Jamie Madrox explaining stuff yeah. and telling us rather than showing us. Well, it was so plotty. I yeah. feel like that was the major problem for me. It was like plot, 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 and then you get your reveal at the end. Yeah. Which, I mean... There's some great moments in here. Don't get me yeah. wrong. I love the character stuff with Doctor Doom. I think that's yeah. a lot of fun. Really fun. Um, the other thing is the stuff with the characters that we care about, like... Uh, Cyclops, like Ruby, like yeah. Layla, like Madrox, are great. The stuff with uh, the other characters, like Trip, yeah. who's kind of introduced and sort of there, uh, the villain, yeah. uh, I didn't really care about it at all. And right. he's the emotional crux of the issue. Yeah. Uh, but I'm excited to see where the series goes. Yeah. Uh, the renumbering up to 200, was it? Uh, yes. Starts, uh... I think the biggest thing that I would say about X Factor, because I don't want to be too down on it, is every issue is re- reliably solid and yeah. a good issue, and it's a great series uh, for X Men fans, for Marvel fans, and for writing fans. So even for if writing some, fans, yeah, even if things don't exactly work, I would still recommend to pick it up. Well, it's just it's better a, than most of the stuff out there. It's that rare comic book where the characters are really well done and they're always moving forward. There's always yeah. drama in between them, and the the dialogue is very good. It's a nice combination of great things. If you can get an artist to really build a run with, yeah, that would be something. I like the current artist. I think yeah, I think he's right good now. It's really good. Uh, but let, uh, let's keep him for a while instead of yeah, a couple seriously. arcs where I was like, who is doing oh, this? Jesus, yeah. Some sort of one fingered monster. Hey, have you ever seen One Fingered Monster, that movie with Daniel Day-Lewis? Yeah, great. Where he draws uh, comic books? It's yeah, really it's like great. God, he's such a great actor. Oh, so he's good. Amazing. You know he was a cobbler in Ireland for a while. Yeah. Um, if you have a question <laughs> for us, you can write us at comicbookclublive at gmail.com, popcultureshock.com slash cbclub, twitter.com slash comicbooklive, iTunes, comicbookclublive, or you can download these very episodes. Tell them where they can see us live. Uh, we are at the People's Improv Theater in uh, the island of Manhattan. Uh, every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock where we do a live version of the show in which a lot of comic book guests and uh, comedy people come by. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's okay. Okay, well, um, you know, keep it keep it light, keep it fresh. It's the best. I recently, It's reliably solid. I mean, even if there's parts that aren't really good, you know, yeah. I still recommend that you go every there, There's always drama between the characters. If only they could get a good-looking artist. A good <laughs> artist to give them a good look. Yeah, that would be nice. That would be nice. But, yeah, it's also, I think they forgot to draw people. It's just not happening. Yeah. Budget cuts. Yeah.